What's going on guys and welcome to another quick video and today's video actually came from a viewer request uh, just either last night or early this morning and I thought it was a great idea because I'm actually working on uh, building like a single note accord uh, or a simple accord. So uh, a viewer asked, he's like, hey, can you show us how, you know, what's your thought process on making, you know, how do you go about making an accord or something like that? So I'm kind of in the middle of making a caramel, like a gourmand caramel accord. And there's kind of two ways you can make an accord. Uh, you can go full on out and have this in-depth, you know, 10 to 15, you know, line item, you know, material formula. Or you can go with the more like an abstract kind of a chord, which is just basically, you know, grab four or five materials that get you in the ballpark and then you just kind of adjust the ratios until you get to something similar that will, when you smell it, you'd be like, oh, okay, that's caramel. Or if you're doing like a rose accord, you can just do like PEA, citronellol, geraniol with the right ratios. I mean, it's a simple three material accord. You smell it, be like, oh, that's rose. Now, of course, you could always build that out even more in depth and, you know, create something more robust. But for these more simple abstract accords, I find they're useful in, if you just, in, if you're in a quick pinch and you just want a quick note of something simple and it's not like a star featured note in your perfume, these simple abstract accords do just great. Because in my opinion, the average consumer out there, when they're smelling perfumes, you know, if they smell like say a sandalwood perfume or something that lists sandalwood as a note, they don't know if they're smelling just Javanol by itself or if it's just, you know, sandalwood by itself or if it's this big robust 10, 15 line item accord. You know, they just smell me like, oh, okay, I, I pick up sandalwood. So for the most part, I try not to get too hung up into building these huge in-depth, you know, accords because if you can get your point across with five or six materials or less and the average consumer can smell it and still be like, oh, okay, that smells like this. You nailed it, in my opinion. So I'll show you guys quickly uh, how I usually come up with these simplistic accords in the, in the case of building like a gourmand, like a caramel accord. And uh, actually I'll go over and grab uh, what caramel I'm trying to recreate. So hold on. Okay, so I'm back and what I grabbed was this squeezable, pourable, it's just basically caramel sauce. Okay, and anytime I build uh, an accord, you need a baseline. I call it a baseline because you need something to gauge it, like what are you aiming for? I'm not going to try and build any sort of accord if I don't know what I'm aiming for or if I have something physically here to compare it with. So if I'm building like an, you know, a caramel accord, I went and bought some actual real caramel sauce. So when I smell this, I can compare it to what I'm building and, and, and adjust as necessary. But you need a baseline or something to aim for because without it, you're just kind of shooting in the dark and you have no idea if your end result is even gonna smell accurate or not. So I went and grabbed some of this caramel, um, caramel sauce, very gourmand. So every caramel is a little bit different in my opinion. Uh, some can be a, a little bit more on the burnt side, which might come off as toffee. Some can be a little bit more creamy or milky. Like this one is very, very milky, very lactonic caramel. But I like that because it's just, it's just this so smooth and rich and creamy caramel. It's almost like the kind of caramel you would get if you have like a, a chocolate bar that has a caramelized center and when you bite it and you've got that big string of caramel hanging from your lip it's like that kind of milk creamy caramel that i was going for which this was great so this was a good baseline to go with so uh enough uh enough rambling so what i do is i grab if i'm going for a simplistic accord i grab what i consider to be like you know the heavy hitters the no-brainers so in the case of caramel i knew there's going to be maltols uh, there's going to be just regular maltol, which is maltol crystals. Uh, the odor profile for that is going to be caramelic, sweets, uh, a little bit more on like the, almost like a burnt caramelic, bready sweet. So that's going to be a good one. Ethyl maltol, which is more of your just straight up sugary sweet. They call it candy floss or uh, cotton candy, which it is. 
but I needed something in there to help sweeten it up without giving it too much of a, a scent. It's, this is what I'm using as a sweetener. Uh, the other two heavy hitters are gonna be your standard vin uh, vanillin, vanillin crystals, and ethyl vanillin. Ethyl vanillin is just, in my opinion, just a stronger version of vanillin crystals. Uh, if you use too much vanillin crystals in a formula, uh, you run across the, the problematic of like decolorizing or colorizing your perfume. If you ever try to uh, use a lot of vanillin in your perfumes and ever see it over time start to yellow, it's probably because you just use a little bit too much vanillin. So sometimes ethyl vanillin is another good one to add in. So you get a, a stronger vanillin scent without the colorization. Now for the milky creaminess that I was going for that's found in this, I actually am going with uh, Buttle Butt Ryo Lactate, uh, which if you smell it on its own, it smells, not to say curdled milk, but it's, it smells like milk but it's on that edge of almost going sour to the point where it could come off as cheese as well. It's primarily a milk scent. It's a very creamy, milky scent. I'd say maybe 70% of it probably is like milk. The other 25% is where you get that kind of funk to it, like it's kind of going spoiled. But I thought this was a good one to, to use in this trial, uh, many trial versions I've, I've gone through. And this seems to work well. And then the, the last material is uh, Sotolone. Uh, this is hella strong. I'm telling you guys right now, if you buy Sotolone, buy it in a small quantity, like four milliliters. That's all you're gonna need for the rest of your life because you're gonna dilute this so heavily that it's that little tiny four ml bottle is gonna last you a lifetime. So, uh, Sotolone, uh, I've got this pre-diluted down to point zero one percent and just one drop will do you i swear to god any more than that and it comes off as too burnt as a caramel scent uh so sotolone is a good sweet caramel scent but it's so so pungent and strong that you just really have to dilute it super low to get that kind of caramel facet if you use too much of it it smells like charred burnt caramel so you have to dose it low. Um, so what I did was I pre-diluted all my materials down to like say 10%, 5%, and then of course the, the Sotolone's down to 0.01%. And it's almost like you kind of have to go through the, the jean Carl's method and just kind of start playing with uh, things. So what I do when I'm building an accord is I'll list out my ingredients and I'll see if I can show that up to you guys here real quick. And what I'll do is I'll come up with a bunch of columns and I'll be like, okay, trial A is going to be, you know, this many drops of this, this many drops of that, blah, 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 and list out all your different drops. And at this point, I'm not weighing anything. This is just experimental. Uh, you'll start to weigh things later, but right now you want to dial in the smell to get the ratios right. So I do it in small amounts by drops in the beginning. So what I like to do is because I'm working in such a small amount and I don't want to waste a lot of these materials just by doing, you know, tinkering and trial after trial after trial until I get everything right, is I kind of folded up this uh, little paper towel. So when I take my beaker and I rest it on here like so, it's kind of tilted at an angle. So as I'm adding drops, all the drops rush to the, the corner of the beaker because again, I'm dealing in such small amounts. If you're gonna go ahead and go wild and do a larger batch, larger amounts, yeah, feel free to just, you know, toss it on the scale and have it upright. But for this, I usually just do little trials because I'm doing many trials until I get that ratio where I feel it's accurate. So what I'll do is I'll start with one column. I'll be like, okay, well, let me try this with this many drops, this with this many drops, this blah, blah, blah. And you go down the line. And at this point, you kind of have to know what uh, each material is doing. Like you have to know your materials before you actually experiment. So I know for a caramel scent, um, it's probably gonna be heavier in vanillin, uh, a little bit lighter in the maltols because maltol comes off again as that burnt caramelicness. But if you use too much maltol, 
and not enough and too little vanillin, it, you're just gonna come across as this burnt, you know, overcharred, you know, caramel scent. So you want smooth, rich, creamy, decadent caramel. So you go heavier with the vanillins, a little bit lighter with the maltols, and then the uh, the butthole butt rye lactate is you season that to taste. And what I found was with this one, it is very, very heavy in the, the milky lactonic region, so I used a lot. Um, and then if you try your own trial blend, uh, blends and you're like, you know what, it's just coming off as too milky. I get so much milkiness from this. Obviously, you would just take that one ingredient and just back it down. And then the, the Sotalone, of course, is one drop is gonna do you, and that's all you're gonna need. So what I tend to do is I make up all these different columns with all the different ratios. And then I actually pour them out into these sample vials here. And then I'll label each trial, each vial, A, B, you know, trial A, trial B, trial C, trial D, trial E. And then I'll, I'll have them all. And you're gonna want to let them sit for 24 hours at least. At least let them sit for 24 hours. Yes, you can go ahead and smell them from the beaker, from the, the, uh, the bottles. Sometimes I know you guys are just so anxious to smell it. You'll probably sit there and take a little bit and dab it on your finger and like try it on your skin. That's fine if you're, if you're you know, eager to do that, but you're not gonna get the true scent until a minimum of 24 hours. I would like to say wait 48 hours because you want things to settle because if you smell things too early, what I've noticed is Things aren't quite mixed together yet. Yes, you've dropped everything in the beaker, if you, you swished it around, you think it's mixed, but all these materials aren't kind of gluing together just yet in the first 24 hours. So if you smell it too early and you're smelling on your skin, what's gonna happen is you'll smell it and be like, oh, this is way too vanilla heavy. I smell way too much vanilla. And then like two minutes later, you'll go like this again and be like, you know what, no, I smell way too much, you know, milky lactone. And then like five minutes later, you smell, you'll be like, no, wait a second. Now I'm smelling way too much sotol. It smells too burnt. It's what happens is when you smell things too early and things aren't really glued in yet and you haven't waited that good 24 to 48 hours, what you're smelling is gonna be just these random notes popping out at random times. And it's, you're not gonna get a good evaluation of what you're, finished you know concoction is going to be so i urge you guys wait 24 to 48 hours before you do any critical evaluations yeah go ahead and smell them beforehand if you want and you're excited you want to see what it's like but don't make any changes until 24 to 48 hours have passed which is why i like to do like four or five different trials all at once in multiple you know multiple vials so when that 24 or 48 hours have passed I can now sample all four or five, you know, blot them all on my arm, or even better yet, sometimes if you've got these little sprayer vials, you know, just pull off a sprayer, dunk it in there, and just spray it on skin. Because what you're going to notice is when you spray something on skin versus just dabbing, dabbing it on your skin, two completely different experiences. You'll notice when you spray something on skin with a sprayer, the way that it evaporates in the air because it was sprayed on is a different experience than if you dab it or rub it on because when you dab and rub it on, nothing's really evaporating in the same way that a sprayer would evaporate it off. So it's a different experience. So when you're testing it, always test based on your end application purpose. And what I mean by that is if you're making an accord intended to be like a note for a perfume, test it by spraying it on your skin through like a sprayer. That's the way a perfume is usually sprayed on. So um, now what I can do is I've got all my different uh, trials here. I've kind of leaned towards trial C so now what we're gonna do is I'll take you over to the computer and we'll take a look at the, the formula itself. Because like I said earlier, we used all these things pre-diluted heavily, like down to five to 10% and the Sotalone down to 0.01%. So yes, now we have to actually take, how many drops is it 
is going to make up a nice decent size, you know, 10 to 15 ml bottle that I can use in my perfume blends. So what you're gonna do is, let's say you're 24 to 48 hours past, you've decided on sample trial C as the best smelling one, you've waited, you sprayed it and you're like, you know what? I sprayed it on skin, I'm comparing it to the real thing. And it's pretty much, it's to my satisfaction, it's not to say it's gonna be dead on because again, we're going for simplistic, uh, abstract, minimalistic uh, accord. It's close enough. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your trial sample C or whichever one was the one that you thought was the best and you're gonna count, well I made, you know, sample C was with this many drops of that material, this many drops. So now you're actually going to get your scale and recreate it using the exact same number of drops as you did as your, your small sample size trial and you're going to make notes, the weight of each material as you build this out. So what's good, what you're gonna do with that now is, now you have the weight of the materials that you used in your uh, small batch trial, but these are pre-diluted. We need to calculate what is it going to be, like you wanna recreate this using raw materials, you know, undiluted raw materials. So take the weight of your trial samples. So see, we had eight drops of maltol, we had four drops of ethyl maltol, I had 10 drops of vanillin, six drops ethyl vanillin, the, the uh, butt rhyo lactate was eight drops, and solitone was just one drop. Keep note of what these were pre-diluted at, and now we're gonna go take a look at the formula on the computer so it calculates exactly what your raw material is gonna be and how much you're going to need to build a larger trial or a larger batch of this. So let's go take a look. Okay. So now that we have opened up here uh, your caramel accord, now hopefully you have a spreadsheet or something like this that does uh, calculations for you. If you do not, uh, just browse through my previous videos where I do share uh, a, a calculator, like a formula builder, something similar to this. So you're going to list out your materials here like I've done here. And you'll see I've got two tabs. I have one called Tinker and one called Final. Tinker is what essentially is basically what was written down on our scratch pad based on the number of drops. We know we, know we did eight drops of maltol crystals, four drops of ethyl maltol, 10 of this, six of that, eight of that, one, one of solitone or sotalone. So also your dilution level, because we, I, or at least I used it pre-diluted so I put in here, these were all diluted to 5%. My vanillin and ethyl vanillin was 10%. This material was diluted to 5%. And the sotalone was diluted down to 0.01%. And you put your weight in grams here. Uh, so with our eight grams, or I'm sorry, eight drops of maltol, though the total weight of just maltol was 0.127 grams four drops of ethyl maltol, 0 0.06 grams, and you enter all this down the road. Now, if you're using my calculator, my spreadsheet, you can look here and it will tell you the material raw, excluding any of the pre-dilutions. So if you look at this material of maltol, it's actually, if you exclude all of that 95% of you know, ethyl alcohol that I used to pre-dilute it, it's actually only using 0 0.006 grams for that material in this trial. And you can see down here all the different raw materials and look how much sotalone we're using. It's trace amounts. So our, our raw formula here, you can see this is our raw formula. This is our formula with dilutions, including you know, the pre-dilutions, but we're, we're only concerned about here is the raw formula. The, raw material in grams and how to build this up into a larger scale so we can fill up maybe a 10 or 15 ml bottle. So what I like to do is in a separate little column here is just take this number because we know all this is our raw materials. We now want to use just raw materials building this into another you know usable uh, you know, material, or we're filling up a 10 to 15 ml bottle of just raw materials. 
you take this and you multiply it. So you can see I multiplied it by 300. And then you just take that and multiply all of these by 300. So now the total is going to be 12 grams, a little over 12 grams. And it's the same ratio, the same raw formula, the same everything. We're just scale now we're just scaling up. We're taking the raw material from our trial blend and we're scaling it up just in the raw material itself. So what you're gonna wanna do is take these numbers and make a new one. Actually, let me get rid of Kumarin because I did not use any Kumarin. And now what you're gonna do is, see this was 1.905 grams of maltol, raw maltol, excluding you know dilution. So in your final formula, put 1.905. Go back to your tinker. Ethyl maltol, we're gonna use 0.9 grams total. Plug it in. And you plug all these things in here until, you're, until you notice there's an exact match in this column here, which is this is your percentage per every you know, individual material of just the raw ingredient in the concentrate by itself. So you'll notice here that these numbers match exactly here from tab to tab, from trial to final. So now we know we can build this up using raw materials here and it's going to tell you right off the bat you know here you go and it's going to be you're going to get 12.57 grams of this raw but we know that you can't you, you know maltol crystals ethyl maltol crystals vanillin crystals all these are crystals so you're going to want to probably dilute this down to let's say you know 10 percent or something like that because right now the way that it sits it's at 95.95 percent raw materials um, sotalone here we had to pre-dilute or use it at 0.1 percent because again it's so strong you can never never use sotalone raw undiluted unless you're working in like gallon size you know trial batches so Here's your raw material. So you would then just go over to, back to your uh, weighing scale, get a brand new beaker, and you would grab your raw maltol crystals, weigh out 1.905 grams, grab your raw ethyl maltol crystals, and weigh all this out, and dump all the powders into the beaker. Uh, this one's already in liquid format. This one's already in liquid format. But you're gonna, be, you're gonna notice that this whole everything in your beaker is primarily just powders and you want to make this as a solution you would then just dilute it with ethyl alcohol so in you know in my spreadsheet if you go all the way down to the bottom you want to dilute in perfumers alcohol right now it's at 95.95 percent strength but it's all powder format so if you want to you know let's say if we added in 15 grams of perfumers alcohol it'll cut it down to 43 percent if you wanted to add in 20 grams of ethyl alcohol, it'll cut it down to 37. And just keep playing with that number until you cut it down to something that you are going to be happy with using in you know, your trial batches. But just keep in mind something like ethyl maltol, um, maltols, um, let's say vanillins generally fall out of solution um, if they're above 10%. So you're probably going to want to keep playing with this number until you get to 10%. So you can see we're getting here now, if we got 80 grams of alcohol, we're at 13%. But you're probably thinking, Jesus, BK, I don't need freaking 80 grams of this single material. I just want 15 grams. Well, then you would simply just go back to your tinker formula and just adjust, you know, make these so they're just not so high, so you don't need so much. And that's pretty much it. So this is my working formula right here for a generalized lactonic, smooth, creamy, gourmand, caramel note. So if anyone's just like, you know what, I don't care about, you know, the, the amounts, just give me the formula, BK, just give it to me. Well, here it is. Here's the formula, 
raw materials for a caramel note that I found was pretty spot on to that uh, caramel sauce that I used as the baseline. All right, so with that being said, I hope you all found this useful and see you next time.